I played NASCAR Thunder 2004 all the time when I was a kid. Well, on PS1 anyway. It wasn't until one fateful day in 2013 that I picked up NASCAR Thunder 2004 on PS2 for the first time. I got it at a Goodwill yard sale for one dollar. I kind of feel like a dick for only coughing up a single dollar for it, especially after I'd been to a different Goodwill sale earlier that day and paid five dollars for a light bulb. It was the middle of July. I had just enough time to play it and put together a 10th anniversary review about it. I popped it in, started a career mode game, did the Daytona 500 and quickly realized... I sucked at the game. In fact, my original review was just going to be me complaining about how badly I sucked at the game. I quickly realized that you can't have auto break in the um, career mode. I mean, if I could do... If I could use auto brake in the career mode, everything would be okay. I can use it everywhere else. Why can't I use it in career mode? I'm sorry, but I just can't play NASCAR games without auto brake. I put down the game for nearly two and a half years after that. It sat and collected dust until I got interested in the game once again. I popped it in, and guess what? I still sucked. But this time I persisted. I found myself getting gradually better and better at the game and soon I was winning several races per season, all without using auto brake. Of course, I started thinking about the review again, and decided it was worth sending this game off with a proper review. So why do NASCAR fans say that Thunder 2004 is the best NASCAR game on PS2? What makes it any more special than its predecessors? What makes it any better than NASCAR 2005? Let's find out. This is the review every game that I own challenge. This is NASCAR Thunder 2004. There are six categories that I grade games on. Gameplay, graphics, sound, soundtrack, menus, and replayability. In this review, I will analyze all six of these aspects to see exactly how well made NASCAR 2004 really is. I skimmed over this game in my 2005 review, saying the cars feel fat. Well, that is actually a pretty accurate description. Whenever you run into another car, you can feel the impact a lot more than in other games. Vibration might just be a bit more intense in this game, but I feel that the cars are fat. Share Draft makes its first ever appearance in Thunder 2004. When you drive behind another car, the two help each other work through the air better, and this is called Draft. It makes both cars go faster. When you press X while drafting, you'll share Draft. This makes both of your cars basically go faster at the same rate, as if both were the exact same car. Sharing your draft will net you ally points. These can help you if you ever need a driving partner on the track. If you drive like an idiot, like I do, you'll end up with a lot of rivals. Rivals are the opposite of allies. Rivals will deliberately try to sabotage your drive. When you come up behind a rival, they'll try to block you. If you come up next to a rival, depending on how much they hate you, they'll try to wreck you. I've seen some rivals even run up behind you when you're entering a corner and try to wreck you there too. Watch out, man. My problem with the ally and rival system is that it's way too easy to become enemies with other drivers. If you lightly tap another car, you're likely to lose 10 respect points no matter what. However, if the racing gods are really looking down on you with spite, they might take 30 respect points away from this little tap. Are you kidding? Gaining this respect back isn't easy either. If you have an enemy in NASCAR 2005, you can draft behind them for one or two laps and their respect will go back to neutral quickly. Here, not only do some hits take away a whole lot of points, but it's really, really, really hard to get those points back. If you make one little mistake, your whole race will probably be shot. You're gonna want to get rid of rivals quickly, because like I said, they are out there specifically to ruin your day. Getting rid of rivals takes a whole lot of laps. And if your car is superior to the cars around you, which it probably will end up being, they'll be really slow through corners, and you'll have to watch your speed, otherwise you'll end up right back where you started. This can be especially stressful when you're trying to make friends. Allies will take respect points way more quickly than rivals will. Rivals will take 4 points with one draft, while allies will take 6 for that very same draft. However, you still need to watch your driving because hitting other drivers will still net you the same loss in respect no matter what the other driver thinks of you. It can eviscerate friendships in seconds. And you still need to gain those points back. And in the end, 
It really doesn't matter how many friends you have. Life usually won't play out much easier for you with a lot of friends, but it can be tough with a lot of enemies. I wonder if this is a metaphor for real life. Well, let's get to career mode, I guess. When you start a new career, you immediately go to your car's design. After you make a design is when you can choose your first sponsors. Then you get to choose your crew members. That's right, you're in charge of everything from your crew chief down to the catch can guy. Once all that's out of the way, you can start your first race and it's off from there. This is your garage. Here you can sign sponsors, manage your team, manage your cars, add on to your shop, or get some pointless hints. After a predetermined period, your sponsors will expire and you'll need new ones, just like in 2005. What's different this time is your sponsors' expectations. These can make or break your entire career. You'll need to meet these expectations or else your sponsors' happiness will drop. And when that number goes below 40, the sponsor will leave you even if time is still on their contract. Once a sponsor leaves you, they will never, ever, ever come back. They are lost in time for all eternity. Which is fantastic because some of their expectations are impossible, for reasons I'll get to in a minute or so. Your cars are probably the most important part of a car racing game. Here you can maintain each core component of your car or overhaul that part to make it better. You can also sell the components outright and build new ones from scratch. How good the parts are all depends on the skill of your fabricators and what shop add-ons you purchase. Add-ons can be built over predetermined periods of time, usually for a lot of money. No matter what, each add-on will improve your car's components in some way. The worst part of these can be just the waiting time. You'll spend half your life staring at this screen waiting for the part to be done rather than utilizing them. The hints really are useless. I'm not lying. Here is the season statistics screen. You can see who has won each race this year and the season standings and all sorts of other awards things and stuff. This screen is a big reason why I've played this game for nearly 10 seasons in about 3 months. This one will show you an individual driver's career wins, top 10s, polls, that sort of stuff. This is a feature in the NASCAR 08 and 09 games on the PS2 as well. This screen is the reason why I don't win every race I enter. Do you see this? Jeff Green? Over 25 wins? Do you think he did that on his own? Who the hell is Winston Kelly, and why does he have all these wins? Well, I have taken the liberty of helping drivers that I like win races. I've done that in games before. 2005 and 07 come to mind. There, allowing other drivers to win counts for nothing. Here, you can see people's careers turn around with your help. I don't know if it's a moral thing or whatever, but while it does feel good to win, it feels even better pushing Elliot Sadler to his own wins. This is why sponsor expectations are unreasonable. A lot of time the sponsors will expect you to win every single race, bar none. Look at that. I can't do that to Jeff Green. He deserves some wins after all the shit he's been through. How about qualify first for every single race? I don't know if I'm doing something wrong, but I literally cannot qualify any higher than 30th for a lot of tracks. And I'm not even lying. Look at this lap at Bristol. I thought it was pretty good. Nope, 43rd place. Auto break or not, I don't know how you can expect anyone to qualify pole at all these events. One more thing about sponsors. When drivers start to retire, you can earn package sponsors in which you can drive real cars in career mode, like contracts in NASCAR 2005. The problem with package sponsors is that if you miss one of the three expectations, you'll lose two happiness points. If you fail to meet two, you'll drop five happiness. It can be a bit of a bitch once those expectations is qualify first for every race. I think that about covers it for gameplay. Driving can be tough depending on how skilled you are without auto brake, but all in all it's probably one of the best NASCAR physics engines ever. That being said, some of the crashes are a bit... unrealistic. I give NASCAR 2004 9 out of 10 for gameplay. Graphics definitely aren't a spectacle. Cars look decent. At least they're actually looking like cars. You can see most of the polygons and the strange reflections. People aren't great either. They look like plastic dolls. They don't even blink. <sighs> Tracks are pretty detailed, but resolution on objects isn't too great. I give NASCAR 2004 7 out of 10 for graphics. 
The sounds of NASCAR 2004 are quite variable. This is probably one of the best crew chiefs I've heard. Spotters and the crew chiefs sound different, so they've got that, I guess. This is the last time you'll hear a crew chief like this. Crew chiefs sound the exact same starting with 2005 and going to 2009. This crew chief can actually be pretty funny at times. I wish there were more sounds when you hit other cars. Since that's how I spend most of my time driving, I get sick of the same sounds of hits over and over. That's about all the sounds. Menus hardly have any sounds. In NASCAR 2004 and PS1, menus sounded badass. Listen to this. taking a point away simply because these sounds aren't in the game. I give NASCAR 2004 6 out of 10 for sound. I for one love this soundtrack. I love Branson. I love Iggy. I love Fuel. These were all mainstream rock songs released around 2003. I'm okay with that. Songs in this game are great. I just wish there was more of them. The Depthspot song is annoying though. I give NASCAR 2004 8 out of 10 for soundtrack. Up next is menus. You may wonder why I choose to rate menus for the overall game. I just think that being able to navigate exactly where you want to get in the game needs to be fluid and simple, otherwise you end up fiddling around with these things much longer than you want to be. Menus are quite nice. Everything is in a logical place and access to them is fluid and simple. No menu is exceptionally tedious to navigate. One problem I do have is that the game will autosave for virtually no reason most of the time if you enter the component selection screen and go back to the main career mode screen. Another astonishing thing I have seen is that the game will randomly and without warning save your profile four times, which creates three useless files that exist only to take up space. This just happens to me sometimes and it boggles my mind whenever it does. I don't know what the deal is, but it costs the game a point. I give NASCAR 2004 9 out of 10 for menus. Well, there's clearly replayability here if I've played 10 seasons over a course of only 3 or so months. Most of this replayability stems from the crew statistics pages. Every season can be different, too. Sometimes it will be a certain driver's year, other time it isn't. Something else I've noticed is that drivers will indeed start to improve when you start to help them. Before, Casey Mears wouldn't drive higher than 20th, now he sticks it to the apron and races to the front with me. It's fun helping my favorite drivers get wins, even if the game resorts to endless stupidity to make sure our drive to the front is as challenging as possible. I played the game all the time on PS1 12 years ago, and now here I am playing it all the time on PS2. Is that what the phrase full circle means? I give NASCAR 2004 9 out of 10 for replayability. And that's all my grading criteria out of the way. Time for the final score. Before that, let me mention a few things I haven't yet. Thunder plates, thunder plates. Where to begin? The thunder plates will only unlock if you drive well. There's no buying them this time. They'll unlock as you progress through your EA Sports bio, which is a beast in its own right. There is, of course, a season mode, because what would a NASCAR game be without a season mode? There's also what I believe is the first ever instance of a lightning challenges which play exactly like those in 2005. There's also a dodge speed zone just like in 2005. There's a new track mode however, which is a set of time trials at every track in the game. It's a straightforward concept, and narration is by Richard Petty himself, so there's that. There's a trophy room nearly identical to 2005's, there's tutorial videos, identical to 2005, and the game can also be a complete douche at times. Just putting that out there. Now for the final score. Keep in mind this is my opinion and personal experience I've took from the game. Your game may be broken and wrong if you have any different experiences. After grading the game over the six categories, I've come up with the final score of... 8 out of 10. This game is very, very good. I recommend all NASCAR fans check it out. It's Bill Elliott's last game. It's Mike Skinner's last game. It's the last game where you can race back to the line whenever there's a caution. It's the last game where you're forced to pit at least once in every career mode race. It's the last game on both PS1 and PS2. It's the last game where all focus was put into the next L Cup series and the next L Cup series alone. It's the last game for a long time where anyone else's wins matter. It's a piece of NASCAR history. 
If this game could be updated with this year's cars and drivers, I'd pay $20 for that update. I've played this game for a really long time in a really short period. I'm sure that my past self would have to concede, this game is indeed a game worth checking out. This song still annoys me though. This has been... Up next is menus. You may wonder why I choose me. Ugh, wow. Said this 15,000 times and it's still screwing up. Dog.